1968, Edward Abbey's book, Desert Solitaire, was released. In that book, Abbey both expressed his deep love for the natural environment and his rage against the construction of the Glen Canyon Dam that stoppered the Colorado River and formed Lake Powell that drowned Glen Canyon, regarded by many as one of the most beautiful natural habitats in the world. In 1969 and 1970, counterculturalists in New Mexico began to gather in small groups to try to stop the kind of air pollution that emanated from the coal-fired Four Corners power plant situated near Shiprock, New Mexico. Some of us formed the Central Clearing House in Santa Fe to gather and disseminate information about areas of environmental concern. We heard scuttlebutt about a proposed coal strip mine scheduled for Black Mesa in northern Arizona, located in the heart of Hopi and Navajo country. We gathered what information we could, and when I visited my old friend David Mananya at his home in Hotevilla in Hopi country, and I told him what we'd learned. He asked me to join him the following day on Second Mesa, where he'd assembled 63 Hopi elders. I told them that the Peabody Coal Company of East St. Louis had signed contracts with the Hopi Tribal Council and the United States government that would allow Peabody to strip mine vast amounts of coal from Black Mesa to fire up a power plant near the shores of Lake Powell. I also told them that Peabody would pump water at the rate of 2,000 gallons a minute from the Pleistocene aquifer beneath Black Mesa to slurry coal to another power plant near Bullhead City, Nevada. The Hopis were enraged, and after a period of discussion, they asked me to help them get this information out to the American public to bring a halt to this entire operation. I went back to Santa Fe, and Jimmy Hopper, Bill Brown, Terry Moore, and I started the Black Mesa Defense Fund. For the better part of the next three years, we gave it our best shot. We worked closely with the Native American Rights Fund to try to legally stop this debacle. We publicized it on the radio and TV, wrote articles for many publications, and we delivered lectures at colleges and universities across America. But we'd taken on the Central Arizona Project, and it would take more than a handful of hippies, Hopis, and traditional Navajos to stop a landmark collaboration between the world of corporate America and the United States government in their determination to turn the habitat of the American Southwest into money. In 1975, Edward Abbey's seminal novel, the Monkey Wrench Gang was published, and thus Abbey became the godfather of the radical environmental movement.